This is the Zenfone 11 Ultra, and it's taken some inspiration from the R8 that we saw a couple of months ago. And when I say inspiration, I kind of mean like it's copied all of the inside specs like for like, and more importantly it's built on last year's Zenfone 10 really well and added all of those great specs for the Rajphone AE into something which is a little bit more mainstream. Some things on the Zenfone 11 have changed dramatically this year. One of those things is that display so last year Zenfone 10 had a fairly decent size display but this year we've jumped to a 6.7 inches display. The battery has jumped as well to 5,500 meters of H with 65 watt hypercharge and Asus said that with that 5,500 meters AH battery in their day of use test this can last up to 26 hours. The chip has jumped to the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, and it also tops out its 16 gigs of RAM, and you get some pretty decent colors, you get four of them desert sand, misty gray and eternal black, and you also get our skyline blue, and Asus haven't just forgotten what made that Zenfone 10 great, because they've put this into the Zenfone 11 as well, you still get that 3.5 millimeters headphone jack. When most people have ditched it at this point, there's still wireless charging, which is really nice to see, and it's still IP68 water resistant, and the display can go up to 144 hertz on some games, but mostly it just stays at that 120 hertz. And I've got to say, it feels really snappy and smooth, and it's cell TPO. So it's kind of like a win all round, but Asus have removed some stuff that also made this Zenfone 10 gray, and there's some stuff that you just don't get on the 11. That multi-action side button is now a fingerprint reader as that's on the display, and I've got to say it's pretty accurate and really quick. So I'm a big fan of it, but swiping up and down on that button also doesn't bring the notification slider down like it did on last year's the Zenfone 10, but you can set a double tap and a long press is different actions which still can be pretty useful. The Zenfone 11 does have some pretty big changes through this year, and one of them being AI. Now every phone that's coming out in the last 12 months or so is putting AI at the front of its devices, and Zenfone is no different. A lot of the AI on the Zenfone is actually done just on the device itself. So a lot of it just doesn't go to the cloud, like for example you've got AI wallpapers, which we've seen before, but on the Zeno you have to download like a 3-4 GB piece of AI software kit, and you get the options of nature textures, abstract cityscape, all the stuff that you've seen before. Zenfone have done really well here, we also have AI Live Call Translation, which again happens in real time on the device. This can only be used using that Asus Styler at the moment, and it sends a prompt to whoever's calling telling them that this live translation is going to happen. And it's your choice, you can either have it live translate your voice, or you can type something into the phone, and it will just translate it into an automated voice on the other end. There's a 50 megapixel main camera which is fairly similar to last year's Zenfone 10 and it still has that 6AI is hybrid gimbal which means that when grabbing photos with that main lens or taking video it has some seriously impressive stabilization. But new on this year's Zenfone 11 is a 32 megapixel telephoto lens which has optical image stabilization and there's a 13 mag ultra wide. First of all, taking photos on any three of those lenses, it's really not bad, so the high lights and low lights, the white balance, the exposure all looks pretty good. But the photos do look a little bit too saturated, and I'm somebody who doesn't mind a little bit of saturation in their photos. The lens choice is a little bit of a confusing mess, though if you want to record in 4K60, then you can only use that main lens, but if you record in 4K30, then you can use the ultra-wide lens, but you can't use the telephoto lens recording 4K at all. The only way to get access to all three of those lenses when you're recording video is to drop down to full HD resolution, which I think it's a bit of a weird choice from Asus with his Zenfone. 
But other than that, I didn't expect to like this Zenfone 11, but I think Asus have done a really good job. Here, let me know what you think in the comments below, and if you do that, then I will see you later.